Hi ladies and gents, Pond here with another video for Rise of Empires, Ice and Fire. Thank you so much for your previous likes, comments and subscriptions to the channel. If you haven't subscribed already, why not click on that button and ring the bell so you can get notifications of whenever I'm dropping videos on the channel, which is daily. And now onto the topic of today's video, which is all about taking poisoned tiles. So this is for um, all of you that are doing Reign of Chaos or Eden. It's our first, first week of Eden for us in State 55 or on Season 4. And we are already... Uh, what are we four days into the season and i've just started taking level 12 tiles today but they have been poisoned so first off why do you want to take poison tiles in the first place you're going to lose troops doing it no matter what you do so you want to be taking higher level tiles as quickly as possible because it's all about that race to level 16 tiles and developing all of your buildings as quickly as possible so the higher the level of the tile the higher the a level of product of materials that it produces per hour so you can look at this a level 11 half burnt logging site it's producing 1000 per hour if you look at a level 13 here just below it's producing 1250 so obviously the higher the level of the tile the more materials you're producing the quicker you can convert those and then use them on construction for increasing the level of the buildings then that will improve improve the efficiency of your workshops and also you can increase your level of base camp so that's increasing your loyalty etc etc so that's why you want to be potentially taking some poison tiles to increase your development quicker in terms of tile info so when you click on the tile here it will say on this front here immediately if you don't have sufficient loyalty it will say what your current loyalty is and the rebel zeal here is the level of loyalty that you require to take a tile without it being poisoned the next thing here is suffering the, the level of damage, basically the level of poisoning each turn of a battle. So you'll suffer 38.96% if I was to try and take this level 13 tile with my 4,501 loyalty because there's almost 1,100 different. If we look at this 15 tile, obviously it's a huge difference. It's 100% damage. I can't do it. So the, the bigger the difference the more damage you're doing now if i can just quickly try and find a level 12 tile over here here we go you can see that i've with only 300 loyalty difference then i'm going to suffer 8.13 percent um, damage each turn now what you've got to think about here is that the golden rule is 40 percent you cannot if if you suffer 40 percent damage on a turn your legion will collapse so you can't take you, you, you just can't do it. You can't take a higher level tile if it's more than 40%. Now, there is a there was in Last Shelf, for those of you that are playing Last Shelf or Survival, there was an exception to this, which was the hero Dragon's Avatar. So Dragon's Avatar, um, he is called Sven in Last Shelf or Survival. And on his ape skill, he had this ability where when this hero squad is defeated or has broken morale, this hero will continue to fight for one more turn. So if you have a tile battle and you kill all of the tile guardians but then all of your troops die from the poisoning it is classed as a draw however if you had dragon's avatar in or sven in your in your legion when attacking terror uh, when when you your lead your squad collapsed your legion collapsed he would continue to fight for one more turn and the game would calculate that as you winning the battle so you could actually um, as long as you killed all of the enemy guardians even if there was a hundred percent poisoning, you could you could still win that battle. Now the devs have removed this functionality from Dragon's Avatar. Now you can see here when attacking territories, if the Legion's loyalty is lower than Rebel Zeal, then the hero will be unable to continue fighting. So you don't have that option anymore. Um, I've got the wrong screen up. There we go. So the two, when you actually click on a tile and you want to find out the information uh, regarding how you can defeat it, you can uh, you can click on view and it will show you the guard power here and then obviously this percentage figure. So as I've highlighted, you want, as I say, it's forty percent is the golden rule. Now what that means is that obviously for for me right now, if I get to turn five in a battle, then. I will go over the 40%. I would have been put, my troops would have been poisoned too much and I'm going to, they will collapse, I'll lose the battle. There are a few niches to that, like if you have a big healer like a Skander or, well, you wouldn't use Skander, but if you use Lawman, for instance, um, then she will heal a bit and it, potentially you can go slightly further into a battle. So 
when you look at this, you've got to factor that in. So if I, with this, I would be, I have to finish the battle. I have to kill the opponent with by turn, by the end of turn four. This means that damage is really key. And we'll talk about that in a second in terms of the heroes that we use. But before I talk about that, there is one extra bit of information that you want to look at, which is helpful, which is this guard power here. Not only the figure, but if you click on the icon here, it will show you how many guardians are, are guarding that tile. And you have to kind of take it as how many are there. It's like separate accounts almost. And this figure here that I've highlighted is how many legions that they have. So there we go. That's highlighted. So... Basically, you're going to have to win four battles to take this tile. And in each of the four battles, you must win it, in this instance, because of the 8%. You must win it by turn four. If I reach any of these battles and I lose and I get to turn five, my troops will get poisoned, I will collapse. However, like if you attack a castle, you can beat a certain, you can beat a legion or you can beat two legions. So... Um, I could attack this tile and the first time I could actually beat two of the legions. Now, they will actually then be removed from the guard from the guardian's um, account. And the next time you go to the, the tile, you would see that you'll know if you've defeated them because A, your, this guard power number will be reduced. And then if you click on the icon, it will say like one out of three left or two out of three left. So you'll know that you've only then got to win two battles or three battles to, to win the tile so it can take you multiple attempts to win the tile and the higher the level of tile the higher the number of guardians troops and also potentially the number of um, legions that you have to beat so on this for instance on level 12 you can see 64,200 is the troop count and we've got four legions if we go to that level 15 tile there you go there's a level 15 it's 7.385 7 million guard power and you've got 83,450 troop count and then there's an extra legion in that first account as well. So you've got to win five battles and there's more troops to kill. So it is at, it's hard, that's why it's harder. Um, you're obviously less likely to win the battle. So you could end up actually having to hit a level 15 tile five times to win. Um, so And that's even like, you know, obviously if it's at a lower poison level. So it's very difficult. It can be difficult to hit those higher level tiles as, as you would expect so as i've said it's all about hitting getting as much damage away as quickly as possible so who's going to do that for you well as i had up earlier these kind of combinations are going to work for you so the best combination is is immortal rose and beast queen so why do they work so well we'll just quickly look at them so immortal his second and fifth skills are passive skills. So they activate, they have a chance to activate every time after every time his troops basic attack. So those are both passive skills. Then his eighth skill is 80% increased damage for the Legion. Uh, not for the Legion, sorry, for, it's for the squad. This is a typo, this Legion. It's, it is the friendly squad. So his squad is always doing 80% extra damage. That is a huge buff. Um, and that, that, like I say, it's all about the damage. So that's immortal. Then if we look at Rosen, her fifth skill is going to give a 70% chance for all friendly squads to deal two basic attacks each turn. So she can she's effectively giving you 70% chance to double the amount of basic attacks that you're doing. Now remember, Immortal skills 2 and 5 activate when he basic attacks. So you've actually got four chances for his skills to activate or each turn if this activates because it's two times two. The other thing with Rosen is that her eighth skill, whenever two enemy squads take damage they take 12 percent extra damage maximum of five stacks so you're she's potentially giving more chances to damage the opponent and then you can get an extra 60 percent damage to two of those squads as well from that ape skill so that is why she's so potent and then beast queen i don't have beast queen in this account let me just quickly scroll down to her so her second skill in the first round, all of our squad's normal attacks and pursuit skill damage. So pursuit skill is immortal's passive skills, the skill, uh, the, the, the skill attacks there. They are, the damage is increased by 80%. The effect is reduced by a quarter around. So 80, 60, 40, 20, zero. So she is giving damage buffs in the first four turns of a battle as well. And obviously the higher, this is a huge 80% buff is a huge amount in turn one. So this combo basically is the combo in the game that does the best amount of damage. 
Her, eight, her fifth skill, Stampede, gives sputtering state where normal attack deals um, has a 70% chance to deal 160% damage to two enemy squads. So you've got, um, she might be doing a second normal attack because of Rosen's fifth skill. She then might be doing an extra 160% damage twice to two of the squads, it, the, the middle and back row squads in, in the Guardian's uh, Legion. And finally, her eighth skill, Lone Beast. And this is the reason why Immortal is put on the front row. So for the first three turns of the battle, the front row cavalry squad has a 70% chance to enter counterattack state, which deals 250% return damage to the source when basic attacked. But remember, Immortal's eighth skill boosts the damage, all of the damage that he does by 80%. So that actually boosts this counterattack ability, which is why you have Immortal on the front row and not Beast Queen. If you look at the other combos as well, Lawman, Lawman has a great recovery skill. So if you're healing troops, and that might mean that you can actually go extra turns into the battle than the initial, like, in, for instance, like up, you 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 can potentially have take more than the forty percent um, poison damage because she will be healing troops, right? Also, she uh, takes damage from the others, and she also has a really good uh, counter attacking skill and skill two that does high amounts of damage to two lines of troops as well. Um, and then this archer combo, so Elk, his one of his skills, his second skill does counter attacks, his eighth skill does extra damage. Inquisitor's fifth skill does 50% extra damage for archers. And then we all know Sakura does guaranteed uh, damage on the second turn from her Sakura Senborn skill. Her fifth skill and her eighth skill add 50% damage and make the opponent receive 50% damage. For that's two two squads in her legion, two squads in the opponent's legion. So that's 100% swing in damage as well. So that combination does huge amounts of damage in the first three turns of the battle as well. An interesting point might be as well, maybe like for instance, Sakura Warden Spectral Reaper might work now because of the amount of extra damage um, and the fact that you get two basic attacks from uh, Spectral Reaper because of Warden, that might be a combination that will work, but it would need testing, and I'm, I'm not sure. It's very early days with the SX6 heroes. So I hope that's kind of covered all of the combos and what they're going to do. The last thing I want to talk about is troop count. Now, the poison is, is based on the number of troops that you put into the squad when you attack the tile. So you the basically, the more troops you put in, the more that would get attacked, uh, you're going to lose. So you don't actually need to do that. In fact, if you think about it, the middle and back rows are basically not going to get attacked at all unless your front row um, collapses because guardians only do basic attacks. They have no skill ability. So you can just basically put your um, back and middle rows pretty much as low as you like unless you think that the middle row might collapse. So you can basically put... Um, like 10,000 troops, for instance, or you can might even for the lower level tiles, you could put 5,000, to be honest, and they should survive. Now, the front row, what you've got to consider is that it is taking the basic attacks from the opponent, so you might want to put it higher. So like for this like level 12 tile, you might want to go 20, 10, 5. Um, for the, high, the higher the level that goes, obviously, the more powerful the troop, the, the tile guardians are, the higher the troop count you're going to want, um, just to bear that in mind. So I've actually, you can see, I've taken some, a level 12 tile earlier and um, I did actually manage to do it in one go. So we're just going to have a quick look at the battle report and see the battle video in action. Uh, so let's just go to, it's a Reign of Chaos battle report. So I did manage to win every battle within four turns. So you can see t the battle one, I did it in three turns. Battle two was three turns. Battle four. Uh, three was four turns and then battle four was four turns so as long as i won the battles within five before f the fifth turn then you can take the tile let's just quickly watch the first battle so you're going to see i this again because i don't have beast queen lawman is this combo is an option for me because lawman has really good counter attacking ability and um then you've got that those extra abilities from obviously rosen is still boosting immortal and the troop, my immortal doesn't. Uh, my immortal doesn't have his eighth skill unlocked either. By the way, I'd like to point out he's only got skills one to five maxed. Uh, another quick point is you really want to take tiles, obviously, if you're a raider with your class legion because that will have the extra might. Um, 
you just want to try and do as much damage as you can. So you can see from the battle video that um, you know this that we are getting the extra basic attacks. We're getting the counter attacking there from Lawman doing huge amounts of damage. And then here is the poison. And do you see that the poison level is around 20% um, of the troop total that I started with? So you could see I had more troops on the front row, so there was a higher amount poisoned. There you go, two, one, five, six, one, six. So that's why there are different amounts poisoned. But then I obviously I still won the battle within three turns. So if we go to say the third the third battle. And my troop count now is down to 7954-2825. And only 1,797 troops on the back row, right? So remember what I said about, you know, tr you can keep your troop count really low. And then we'll see the poison this time is much lower because it's still based on a percentage figure of the troops that you started the battle with. So I hope that kind of all makes sense, guys. Um, obviously, it is quite a complicated subject, poison tiles. You don't have a lot of options in terms of the, the different hero combos. You need to have heroes that are guaranteeing you massive amounts of damage at the start of the battle. And you've got to remember that 40% rule um, that that is going to define by which turn of the each battle that you're going against for the Guardians that you have to win by. And of course, if you don't, if you don't win first time, but you do defeat uh, a guardian, one of the legions, then you can go back and you can try again. It might be that in some circumstances you would have to have to attack a tile five or six times to win. But you've got to remember as well that you've, you know, your troops are a finite resource. So how, how much you push hitting poison tiles is your own personal choice, and also dependent on how many troops you have. If you've got, if you're like an account with 500 million power, then obviously you can hit hit all day long. And, and not to worry too much about losing a few hundred thousand troops. So um, there we go, guys. That is how to take poison tiles. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please do remember to click on that like. If you have any questions or queries about what we've covered, then pop it in the comment section below. If you've got any suggestions for good combinations of heroes for taking poison tiles, I'd love to hear from you, all the everyone watching this video would. So please do pop them down below. That would be much appreciated. And if you could please share my channel and this video in your Alliance chat, province chat, and free line, WhatsApp, Viber, Discord. And for those of you who need it, why not also in the province and guild chats? That would be really great. Thank you so much for watching. That's it for now, and I'll see you soon.